In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aqu Aquila, a native of Pontus, and had recently, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked with them for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So we left there and went to a house belonging to a name of Titus Justice, a worshiper of God. His house was next to the synagogue. Crispus, a synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord along with the entire household. And many of the Corinthians who heard believed and were baptized. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord, Lord note to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed it. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed the nations to save The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. 
Uh, so they said, what is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted what they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Are you discussing with each one another what I said? A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Yesterday we saw in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, what coming right before today's reading, is that uh, St. Paul kind of uh, surprised the people by talking about the resurrection. It wasn't so much that he was talking about the resurrection that they su were surprised by, like I said, almost every mythology in the world has resurrection accounts, including Greek and Roman mythologies. What surprised them was he was speaking of it as an actual reality. It's an actual reality that actually happened to someone and that we were called to participate in. It wasn't so much the idea of the resurrection as much as the idea that the resurrection is something that happened in time, in space, and something that we concretely also are called to participate in. So he was taking, uh, you know, uh, so it kind of surprised them that he was talking this way. And some of them were intrigued by the change in the usual way of discussing resurrection. And some of them were put, by, uh, put off by it. But the important thing is they recognized that he was making a shift. Now today, uh, interestingly enough, we continue that same shift. We continue that same shift because of the mention of the expul expulsion of the Jews in Rome under Claudius. Now that is, now we're starting to get into a, a, a time in which there is uh, some historical references to things mentioned in the Bible. In this particular case, Claudius did indeed expel a certain number of Jews from Rome. He expelled them from Rome because of the discussions and the debates that had broken out into street fights about a certain Christus, a certain uh, you know, it's misspelled, but a lot of people uh, think it is about Christ. You know, it's meant to be Christus rather than Christus, but that's a slight difference, one letter. So uh, there, there seems to be now, uh, you know, coming more and more historically uh, based, more and more and more historically directed, that the gospel message has an actual historical setup. I think that's also why they mentioned that G uh, Saint Paul argue that the Christ is Jesus, because that's what had gotten the people expelled from Rome, was that very discussion, that very uh, debate. Now, it's important, though, even as we recognize that the historical element of Christianity is being underlined in uh, St. Luke, that we not <coughs> automatically assume that the writings are what we would call history today. Uh, the, probably what I think is one of the best examples of this, of course, is the uh, Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew's Gospel and the Sermon on the Plain in St. Luke's Gospel are almost definitely the same speech. <laughs> They're almost definitely the same speech which were reworked by the human authors because of their audience that they had in mind. St. Matthew, of course, was writing to a prominently Jewish author, so he is using the uh, Sinai, the Exodus imagery to give certain teachings to the people. St. Luke was writing almost uh, primarily to a Greek-speaking audience so he is using Homeric references, the Homeric setup, in which to place the teaching so that certain truths could be conveyed that way. So even as the historical veracity is being asserted, we have to never forget the fact that Luke and Matthew both were writing according to the rules of their time. And the rules of their time allowed certain things that wouldn't be allowed today in a historical or in a, a journalistic setup such as rewording what was actually said to stress a point, such as changing the uh, people who were there, changing the uh, uh, environment, the setting, in order to stress a point. That would have been considered quite acceptable at the time. It's not today, and we have to be very careful there because, of course, if we're not careful to look at the genre, then we wind up saying silly things such as, in order to be a Catholic, you have to believe the world was created in seven days, period. That, of course, is not church teaching. 
and indeed church teaching not only allows, but uh, encourages the, uh, uh, shall we say, looking over the historical and uh, documentary evidence, in this case the evidence of the rocks, as far as the questions of evolution, and doesn't require creationism and things like that. Uh, still being faithful to the Christian understanding of what the scriptures are. So today we really uh, are being presented with, I think, uh, two, two interesting points. One is that St. Luke, or the author of the Acts of the Apostles, is starting to present us with a certain historical foundation for Christianity, one which takes into a realm that the uh, myths, mythologies of the paganism would never have imagined to go to. But he does the same thing, he does it at the same time using the writings of the time. He makes the reference to the people expelled from Claudius. So in his talk about what Paul was talking about, he mentions exactly what Claudius expelled the Jews from to kind of uh, strengthen it, but using the writing styles of the time in which it was considered acceptable to rework speeches and things like that to make another point, to make a larger point, if you will. So today, we are being faced with uh, two facts at once, really. One is the fact that Christianity is a historical religion. What I mean by that is it talks about things that actually historically happened. Jesus actually historically died on the cross. Jesus actually historically rose from the dead. But at the same time, it's not a fundamentalist religion in which we read things and interpret things as if they were written uh, by using our modern standards of writing, but have to come to understand the ancient styles of writing if we want to understand the point that's being made. So Christianity has this wonderful embrace both of history and of the transcendent, if you will, both of the um, things that historically happened and the spiritual reality that lives behind it and underlies it. Christianity brings together, to put it another way, humanity and divinity. God and man are made one. This is seen in the writing styles. This is seen in the presentation that we see in today's first reading. So let us rejoice today in this fact, that God has become man in an irrevocable manner and calls men to become gods, to live by the very life of God himself. So this is a fact that we have to embrace and realize that it means living in this world with our feet firmly planted in the world, but also allowing our, he our hearts and minds to soar to heaven, not just to the angels, but higher than the angels, to the eternal realities of the go Godhead itself. So let us keep these two elements in mind, that Christians are called to live in this world even as we transcend this world. We see it very nicely the readings that we've had the last couple of days. I also, uh, by the way, total change of point, ask you to remember two prayer intentions in, in, in your personal prayers. One, Deacon Pavarnik is going to be having surgery uh, next week for his kidneys. Um, so there's a, you know, a mass in one of them, so they want to do, do some surgery there to uh, straighten that out and stuff. So keep him in your prayers. And also, of course, the people in Bangladesh and India who are affected by the uh, typhoon, which uh, uh, struck land there uh, pretty forcefully. So keep those two special intentions in your prayer as well. Would you please stand for the prayers of the faithful? Let us pray for the church that all of her members may ever more fully embrace the gospel message, both in its historical concreteness and in its transcendent truth let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for let us pray for those in positions of public authority, that God may keep them strong, healthy, and safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all the parishioners of St. Patrick's, that at all times we may rejoice in the fact that we are both the Son of God and the Son of Men, that we are both the uh, ones to transform this world and to enter into paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all the residents of Chancellorsville, that at all times we may rejoice in God's many gifts to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all the sick and suffering, 
that God may open for them the gates to eternal life. I mean, may give them healing of body, mind, and soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all the faithful departed that God may open to them the gates to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for the intentions of Lawrence and Frida Hamish for, uh, for the repose of their souls for which this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit down upon us. May he open our eyes to the reality that each one of us have been created creatures of this world and have been born with a physical body in a historical and cultural setting. But we have been called by your grace to be your sons as well, to transcend not only this world but the entire spiritual realm and go to the Godhead itself. May we rejoice in these two facts. May we live both of them faithfully confident that your Son, who is both God and man, shows us the way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be con uh, conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, and for Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the Lamb of my room. And say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So you can record and help with communion at the same mass. 
You're amazing, man. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who restores to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be God. And once again, if you want to go to confession Thursday morning, it's in the school, okay? Don't know why I said it once again. I didn't mention it earlier, but anyway. <laughs>